sperm maturation makes the sperm competent to fertilize. In this video, I am going to tell you what is sperm maturation and what are the changes occur during sperm maturation. Hey everyone, welcome back to HM Learnings. I am Harshita, the creator of HM Learnings, where students come to clear their concept and to get the study material. Make sure you subscribe my channel. So today we are back with the another video of the reproductive system that is a sperm maturation in epididymis or in the male reproductive tract. So in the last video if you remember we have talked about the structure of the sperm in which we talked about in detail about every compartment or every part of the cell the structures which are important or involved in the metabolization involved in the metabolism in the sperm and the structures which are involved in the motility of the sperm in the mobility of the sperm and how does the sperm is getting the energy for moving and uh, other things so in today's video we are going to talk about a very very important concept which is called as a sperm maturation so uh, now like it seems to be very uh, uh, interesting that what is sperm maturation we have seen that that sper spermatogenesis process we have seen then we have seen spermiogenesis we have seen spermiation all these processes we have seen and finally a structure the spermatozoa has came out of it which is we called as a sperm so now what this new thing what is this new thing which is called as a sperm maturation what is happening and if it and if it if this is sperm maturation then what are the things which are already been discussed because we have talked about so much about the sperm the structure of the sperm and everything and now we are talking about something called as a sperm maturation so this appears to be little different and uh, not so obvious thing so sperm maturation is basically now till now uh, this has been this has been started from a series of experiments if I can say so there was an experiment in which it has been seen that if the sperm is being taken from the testes and then that sperm is put with the ovum in the petri dish the sperm is not able to fertilize the egg and it has been seen that is the if uh, if uh, that uh, that that sperm which has been taken from the testes is actually not motile it, it not being moving even though it is having all the components of the sperm which is required for its metabolism which is required for its motility but still that sperm is not able to move but if the sperm has been taken from the terminal portion of the epididymis it is executing the motility so then it has been found out that it's not only the formation of the spermatozoa till uh, till where the process is being ended actually the process of the sperm maturation is something which is happening outside the testes so after completion of the spermatozoa genesis and spermiation as i already said and we have already discussed that we have talked about so much about the that how the spermatogonia is there and how it forms primary spermatocytes and secondary then spermatids then spermatozoa then we talked about the spermiation then we talked about the structure also but still we are saying that the sperm is not being matured so that is what they are also saying that the sperm is basically morphically morphologically it is highly differentiated it is ha having head body and tail but sperm maturation is not being done and that is why it is lacking the fertilizing capacity so the main function of sperm is to take the genetic material to the oven and fuse with it so that there is formation of a zygote but now the sperm is having everything which is required to have that to have that mo uh, motility but still the sperm is not able to move and it is lacking the fertilizing capacity it is, a, it is having poor motility it is having inappropriate chemical composition of its plasma membrane and all these changes will happen during the process of sperm maturation which finally makes sperm to have the fertilization fertilizing capacity so that it can have the motility it can reach the ovum and after reaching the ovum it can penetrate the layers surrounding the ovum and finally fuse with the membrane of the oocyte so that is the 
penetrating capacity as well as a fusing capacity both of them should be there only then the sperm can fertilize the egg so this is called as a sperm maturation and this process to make the fertilizing uh, fertilizing competent the sperm undergoes two extra testicular maturation maturational processes that is what i have i have said that testes are doing only the function of making a spermatozoa it is being made into a kind of a cell which is morphologically highly differentiated but it is still lacking its functional capacity that is a fertilizing capacity because it is not mobile because it is not having the penetrating and the binding capacity but here there are two sites at which the process called as a sperm maturation is being taking place first is being happening in the male reproductive tract itself in the epididymis which is called as the epididymal sperm maturation which we are going to deal today and there is another after that there is another maturation which is happening in the female genital tract which is called as a capacitus Capa capacitation so this capacitation is something which we are going to deal in the upcoming video but today we are going to talk about the first sperm maturation which is happening outside the testes in the epididymis called as a sperm called as a epididymal sperm maturation so as i already said sperm maturation is basically involving those processes which is finally leading to the changes biochemical changes in the membrane in the uh, in the protein which are being involved in causing the mobility of the sperm there are certain modifications which are going to happen which is ultimately giving the sperm its capacity to do its function and these things is called as a sperm maturation so now one could think that okay if the sperms are not motile how does they are going to reach to the epididymis so from the seminiferous tubules the there is a passive flow the secretions are there and these secretions they are actually dragging the sperms together uh, uh, with them to the reti testes and from the reti testes also there are some secretions which are dragging the sperm with them and by passive flow only the sperms are reaching into the efferent ductriol where in the efferent ductriol the smooth muscles are there the ciliated epithelium and the secretory flow again is pushing these sperms into the epididymis so even though the sperm is not having the motility the sperm is passively flowing from the seminiferous tubule to the epididymis by the secretory flow by the smooth muscle action of the efferent ductriol and by the ciliated epithelium of the efferent ductriol so now we can talk about the topic of today's video that is the epididymal sperm maturation which is happening in the epididymis so epididymis is a 6 meter long a uh, coiled tube which is being present on the posterior aspect of the testes and it is anatomically divided into the three regions so you can see in this uh, diagram this is this is this round structure is testes and this is the epididymis which is present on posteriorly on the testes so this is the head this is body and this is a tail of the uh, epididymis which is then continuing which is actually then draining into the vas deferens so this is the diagram of the epididymis and uh, the the important thing is then that as the sperm is traveling through this entire length that this 6 meter long length of the uh, epididymis it is undergoing the process of sperm maturation it is undergoing the morphological changes biochemical changes and it takes not like it takes not the minutes it takes days to get completed and finally it uh, when it becomes like uh, competent it appears in the ejaculation and it takes around 12 to 26 days to appear in the ejaculation so what are the morphological changes let's talk about the changes which are happening during this uh, time and how it is facilitating the fertilizing capacity or how it is facilitating the uh fertilization so first change is a morphological change which is involving the translocation of the cytoplasmic droplet present at the neck of the uh sperm to the middle piece in the spermatozoa so this is 
a kind of a diagram you can see it is a very good diagram this is head body tail of the epididymis and these arrows are showing that what are the changes which are happening as it is moving from head to tail so you can see that uh, the first change which we have already talked is a translocation of a cytoplasmic droplet which has happened as it is progressing from head to body now another changes the biochemical changes like the changes in the lipid of the plasma membrane in the protein of the plasma membrane so the first change biochemical change is the lipid content of the membrane so the lipid content of the membrane is going to be a change that is the ratio of unsaturated and saturated fatty acids their ratio and the decline in the cholesterol level is going to happen during the sperm maturation and this process is also being happening as we can see again this very nice diagram that there is a increase in unsaturated saturated fatty acid ratio and decrease in the cholesterol level this is going to does what this is going to make the membrane more fluid and hence making it more fluid and suitable for the membrane fusion reaction such as the acrosome reaction and the fertilization so during these reactions the membrane has to fuse so during that reaction the fluidity of the membrane needs to be high and that is why these changes during the sperm maturation makes the sperm more capable of undergoing these changes and then bringing the fertilization next is a change in the protein content of the membrane that is also happening as a sperm is progressing from head to body so this is involving the addition of the the insertion of the proteins on the sperm membrane by the epithelial cells of the epididymis so we know that the sperm is transcriptionally silent it can't produce its protein so here the proteins which are being inserted into the plasma membrane of the sperm is actually being produced by the epithelial cell of the epididymis so they are going to produce the proteins and they are they are going they are going to release these proteins and then these proteins are going to be inserted into the cell membrane of the sperm so one of the protein is the casper so casper is a sperm specific calcium channel which is being regulated by the ph and this is leading to the entry of the calcium inside the sperm during its passage from the during its passage in the female genital tract and hence it is very very important for the mobility of the sperm so you can understand now that how the sperm is acquiring the mobility how the sperm is acquiring the fertilizing penetrating capacity and now you can have an idea what is sperm maturation and how it is different from the formation of the sperm so another protein which is just being another type of receptors are also going to be inserted on the plasma membrane which these receptors are going to interact with their specific molecules in the female genital tract to exhibit the chemotaxis so how does the sperm is going to know that where the ovum is so that path is guided by the molecules produced by the ovum and these molecules are going to be sensed by the receptors present on the sperm membrane so these receptors are going to be inserted during the process of sperm maturation then involves the next thing which is a change in the protein of the tails so tails are having the proteins we have already discussed about the microtubule microtubules okay so microtubules and the other proteins they are being present which are important for processing the motility so basically there is cross linking of the proteins there which is going to make tails stiffing stiffer so that they can exhibit the bending and they can move forward and the last not the last the acquisition of the oocyte binding capacity or the ability that how it is going to bind to the oocyte how they are going to bind to the zoonal placenta so these things are also going to be acquired during the sperm maturation and the tail of the epididymis is a site where the sperms are going to be stored before the ejaculation so you can see in this diagram all these things are being there that there is increased disulfide bonding translocation of cytoplasmic droplet increase in unsaturated saturated fatty acid ratio then acquire oocyte binding capacity and as well sperm storation storage region is the tail and this is 
basically we have talked about the sperm maturation which is involving the morphological and the biochemical changes so even if you forget the details you can still remember a little bit about that yeah sperm maturation is different from the production of the sperm and during the process of the sperm maturation the sperm is going to acquire the proteins the lipid changes in its membrane so that it is having the educate mobility so that it is having the educate fertilizing penetrating and binding capacity to the ovum so now the very important thing which comes to remember here is that that even though so much maturation is being done in the uh, in the male reproductive tract but still the sperm is not having the fertilizing capacity still the sperm is lacking that fertilizing capacity and the final stage of the maturation is going to be happening only in the female reproductive tract when the sperm Uh, spends certain amount of time in the female reproductive tract, and that process is called as a capacitation. So both of the sperm maturation processes are are important. First, it has to be there in the epididymis, and even if you take the sperm from the epididymis, uh, from the distal portion of the epididymis, and you transfer it into the tray, into the tray. at that time also the sperm won't be able to fertilize the egg because still it is not having the enough fertilizing capacity that capacity is going to be acquired when the sperm is there in the female reproductive tract for the certain amount of time so this video on capacitation is like we are going to do in the future definitely so with this we are at the end of this video if these are the um uh, most important references of this video this uh, this chapter from the book of clinical embry embryology is very very like uh, this is a this is a reference from which most of the content have been taken so you can go and refer this is available on the google so if you like this video please like share and subscribe and comment your doubts and suggestions till then keep learning